In this video, I'll be taking on every Remembrance boss while playing as one of the most difficult bosses in the entire game. Melania. Thanks to the help of a brilliant modder by the name of Luke Yui, I am now able to play as any enemy or NPC in Elden Ring. The mod isn't perfect yet, and I won't be able to play through in the traditional sense because enemies can't inherently interact with doors, ladders, or NPCs for that matter. I'll be timing each fight and aggregating the times at the end so that we can compare the final time of this run to the final time of other runs when I do the same thing as other bosses. So if you think that's something you'd be interested in, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment letting me know who you want to see me play as next. I play as Rikerd, Astol, Godfrey, please say Godfrey. In case you've been living under a rock or just haven't gotten to Melania yet in your own playthrough, she has never known defeat. And for good reason too, the lifesteal on her attacks is really hard to deal with and the fact that she recovers all of her poise within about five and a half seconds of hitting her is borderline cheating. On top of that, she has one of the most devastating attacks in the entire game, Waterfowl Dance which completely shreds players and bosses alike, as you'll see in this run. Her HP is about 18k in her first phase, and she's sitting at a respectable 80 poise with some nice resistances to boot. I think Melania has all the tools necessary for an S tier time, but what you need to keep in mind is that I'm bad at this game. Which is why I always play as bosses. This gameplay will be far from optimal, and that's okay. We're just doing this for fun and because I like to organize things, so if that sounds good to you, let's jump right in. But first, Project Orochi has just released their newest season, season 11, and it has Elden Ring inspired clothing. Does this person look familiar? She should. That's obviously Melina. I reached out to them to see if they will let me talk about their clothing again. If you haven't already guessed by now, they said yes. Some of my favorite things from this collection have got to be their summer friendly pastel colored t-shirts, which are not only stylish, but also very high quality and I just ordered two. Of course, I shamelessly used my own discount code, Amazing Chest, and I highly encourage you to do the same. They have free shipping for anyone in North America, and if you happen to order the wrong size, then you have 30 whole days to return your items. If it wasn't already evident from their clothing, these guys are huge fans of Elden Ring, of the channel. Wait, they have dad caps now? Go check them out on Instagram, and if you do, let them know that Chest sent you. The time starts as soon as someone takes damage, and. We don't waste any time here. We're gonna go ahead and go for a trade here first. And you can tell that I'm moving kind of sluggishly. Honestly, Melania's movement speed really isn't that fast and the tank controls I'm forced to use while piloting an enemy definitely doesn't help. I'm gonna jump back here and space the move you all came here to see, Waterfowl Dance. And you definitely wanna lock on for this because it is so hard to aim, you have no idea. If I were locked on and hit all of those, then I'm pretty sure Godric would have died before even reaching phase two. Anyway, soon after he transforms, we poise through his flamethrower, and just like in the lore, Godric finds himself at Melania's feet, begging for mercy. The Renala fight was going really well. I was making some good time right up until this happened. Okay, that should break it. I think we can finish this in one combo if I do it correctly. Did I aim this right? Oh no, 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 no. Okay, hold on. Nice. Wait. Oh no, she's still alive. That's gonna suck for time. Oh, there we go. I gotta start using that more. In phase two, as long as we avoid the Kamehameha, then we don't have too much to worry about. Melania's blade has no trouble cutting right through her robes, which for some reason give her 80 poise, which is the exact amount of poise that we have. But yeah. Renala goes down without much of a fight. Third on our hit list is another lore friendly fight versus our half brother Chet On. In the lore, these two reached a stalemate, but that's not going to be the case here. The fact that he starts so far away gives him a couple of free shots with his great bow, which is kind of cheap if you ask me, but I guess we can't really complain since I am playing as Melania. Chet On's model size is so large that he is a perfect candidate for waterfowl and it melts his HP. Afterward, he jumps into the sky like he always does, but when he lands, He's nowhere to be found. Wait, where did he go? Oh, he's dead. Yeah, <laughs> I, guess, I guess he's finished. GG's. Okay, my goal for this fight is to not let him heal once. If we can do that, then we should be in a good place. 
This move is so hard to aim. Oh, there it is! Did I get him? I don't think I did. Come on, just one more hit! Oh my gosh! Just die already! This lifesteal is amazing. Alright, that could have been a lot faster, but we'll take it. Astol's teleportation can be a huge time waster, especially against someone as slow as Melania. He has just about the same HP as us, and while he is a tanky boss, he is not immune to Scarlet Rot. Okay. Oh, he poise broke me. Let's get some distance. Here, I've been saving this for you. Just a few more hits and he should be done. There it is. Astol goes down. I'm definitely gonna have to play as him one day. I can't believe Melania is related to this thing. Going into this fight, I was really worried about the lava because Melania doesn't really have many ranged attacks. And that's when I decided to go for this. That is melting him. No pun intended. Show me your true form. Let's get out of this lava. Okay, I'm gonna make this quick. He's just tanking me, but I'm absorbing his HP with every hit, so I think we're going to be here for a while. Oh, no. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I'm getting devoured. Even this attack is... No, that's actually... That's doing a ton of damage. Oh, that... That is a lot, too. Okay, there it is. Whew, I was worried there for a second. Before we take on Morgoth, we have to fight Gold Free. And after a bit of back and forth, I quickly realized that the real boss in this room isn't either of us. It's actually the camera. Anyway, I miss about half of my moves in this fight. And don't worry, I swear I start locking on later in the run. And it definitely makes a difference. After Gold Free though, on our way to Morgoth, we take the tree challenge, which is basically just seeing which bosses can climb this branch on their way to the Queen's bedchamber. Melania does not succeed. Did the Queen really sit on this? If I sat on that, my ass would just disintegrate. It makes no sense. She lives in this entire castle and she's sleeping on when we finally do arrive at the Elden Throne. The fight with our half-brother is kind of one-sided. The main thing you want to look out for in this fight is the hammer because it can rip right through our AD poise, knocking us down and wasting our time. From a health standpoint, we're actually good because we have nearly twice as much HP as Morgoth. He makes a huge mistake going for the Holy Daggers here and that gives us enough time to go for our signature move, putting an end to the sibling rivalry. It's hard to say because this is our first run, but I think we're doing well so far. With the exception of Renala and Rikerd, we're actually making some pretty good- The next destination on our journey to wipe out our family tree brings us to Moog, who is such a cool boss. In fact, hold on a second. Yeah, definitely gonna have to do a Moog playthrough. Just look at him. Such a cool boss. Anyway, this fight is personal for Melania because in the game's lore, Moog kidnapped Mikella, our twin brother, in an attempt to become a full-fledged god. But when his plan failed, he just never returned Mikella back to the Halleck Tree. Ironically, given the bad blood between these two, and I am not sorry for that pun, this is the first fight in the run that actually can be problematic for Melania, given that we are weak to bleed or hemorrhage as this game calls it. As I'm writing this, I'm realizing that hemorrhage is kind of a hard word to spell. Didn't realize it had two H's in it. So yeah, Moog goes down and look, I know what you're thinking. I have definitely beaten this game, okay? Those achievements you're seeing, they're not what you think they are. Don't look at me like that. I've definitely beaten this. As someone who has definitely beaten this game, I can tell you that Fia's quest is actually kind of annoying. Shoutouts to Spicy for giving me a save file right in front of the Lich Dragon. This fight is usually tough because when playing as a Tarnished, you have to worry about Death Blight, which can insta-kill you, but Melania is completely immune to it. She also has this. Yeah, Scarlet Rot is absolutely busted, but you already knew that. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about Fia's champions. I thought the Fire Giant would take longer than the Rikard fight, but I was dead wrong. This one was like a minute shorter actually, and the fight would have been even quicker if I didn't waste 20 seconds whiffing this attack. It's a strong one, but you really have to use it wisely. After one of Miyazaki's fever dreams, Melania's weakness to fire becomes very apparent. Just look at how much damage that did. If we get hit by that again, then we might actually see our first death of the entire run. Luckily for us, he doesn't go for that attack again, and we're able to seal the deal with a jump attack. 
Up next is the Dragon Lord, and I'll just say it now, it put up a much better fight than the Lich Dragon. When this fight starts, our damage is respectable, but Waterfowl isn't doing nearly as much damage as it was doing before. As soon as the combo ends, I could tell that this is going to be one of those longer fights, so to try and prevent that, I did what any Melania would do in this situation, and I just go right for the Scarlet Rot. Unfortunately though, the Dragon Lord is extremely resistant to that, so the most we get out of it is a poise break, and after going for a quick combo, he's going to jump into the sky and completely disappear, further wasting our time, and this goes on for about a full minute before he eventually just goes for a Godzilla laser, but it's already too late. We're going to go ahead and poise right through using Waterfowl Dance, and this fight ends with us at about a third of our HP. Next up is Malekith, and this fight is the antithesis to Melania's, at least in the second phase. The first phase is awesome, I actually really love this fight, especially as a boss because we have what I refer to as boss privilege and that means we can't fall off ledges which is really nice because Malekith has no trouble knocking us down. In phase 2 he can flat out reduce our maximum HP and the damage over time debuff basically cancels out our lifesteal. After getting our poise broken a few times we do come out on top and that's going to bring us to Godfrey. If I did this run as Godfrey, how do you think he would compare? Would his time be faster? Slower? You think it'd be easier? When the fight starts, the first thing I do is jump back and go for a waterfowl. But Godfrey's massive poise just eats it up and instead we find ourselves getting poise broken. Despite all of the hits we're taking, Melania's life still keeps us very healthy. And by this point, I'm starting to get the hang of her movement. Using her sidestep to dodge his bloody grabs, disgusting, and backsteps to dodge his shockwaves makes the fight so much easier. Towards the end here, I even go for a jump attack to dodge his stomp, and now there is nothing standing between us and the final branch of our family, Halleck Tree. In case the red hair didn't give it away, Radagon is Melania's father. And we both have one arm, so I guess the apple doesn't fall too far from the Halleck Tree. Okay, I actually am sorry for that one. Aside from the uh, emotional damage, this fight isn't very difficult for Melania, partly because Radagon's frail image makes him susceptible to poise damage. Our boss privilege also kicks in here because he does have a grab, but since bosses can't be grabbed, we don't have to worry about it. Once Radagon falls, the Elden Beast rises and we're gonna open up with another Waterfowl. It does way more damage than I was expecting and the boss's large hitbox ensures that every single hit lands. After that, the Elden Beast is gonna smack us around for a bit and we get some pretty good RNG when he goes for this attack because normally he swims away here. But now that he's standing in place, he is wide open for one of our most devastating attacks. Of course, Elden Beast is immune to every single status effect, so he's gonna survive and that's when he finally does swim away, which sucks because we were this close to killing him. To add insult to injury, he teleports away and starts going for ranged attacks and at this point I'm like he's gotta be doing this on purpose. Not the strongest finish since we did get trolled by the Elden Beast AI at the end but considering the fact that we completely annihilated some of the earlier bosses like the Lich Dragon, I don't think it's the worst thing. With the final boss defeated that leaves only one more boss for us to beat. Let me solo her. I mean Melania. In this fight you want to stay in the air as much as possible because the more that Melania hits us the more that she can heal herself. And the fact that we have to beat both of her phases means that we're already up against 33,000 HP and that doesn't even factor in the lifesteal. This fight is like something out of an anime with both of us leaping across the entire room and the edge goes to whoever can poise break the other more often. That person is me and after landing one the flower dive puts Melania in range for a few jump attacks. Shortly after that, we're taken to phase two. The phase two battle is intense. We know that Melania always goes for the flower dive, so jumping back is all we need to do to set up one of our own. The rest of the fight speaks for itself. End, 
Playing as Melania is some of the most fun I've had in Elden Ring so far, and huge thanks to Luke Yui for developing the mod. Please go check out his channel, he has a bunch of other mods he's currently developing, like the Seamless Co-op mod, which I'm doing a video with next week. As far as Melania goes though, it is still pretty early, but I think she is a top tier contender for fastest time in this boss rush. We'll have to see how the other enemies compare though. There are still tons of other bosses and NPCs to do this challenge as, and Melania is just the beginning. If you enjoyed this video, then check out one of these. I think you'll really enjoy them. In the first one, I take on every boss in Dark Souls 3 as Frida. And in the bottom one, I give $1,000 to whichever one of my subscribers can survive my battle royale.